Thank you for joining us for another episode of Eye on Hako. I'm Nicole. Hi everyone, my name is Kenta. And today's topic will be all, all about, about Hako. Hako. All about Hako. Um, here at American Hako Products, we try to um, pick up a particular product every month and try to give you guys as much information as we can on that one particular product every month. But this one being that it's the first of the year, we wanted to make it more of a, uh, a general overview on all the different types of products uh, we have to offer here at American Hako Products. Yes, but before we get into the overview of products, mm -hmm. let's give our viewers a background on Hako and Maybe a little bit of history? In American Hakko, sure. Uh, so just a quick uh, history about Hakko. Hakko, we uh, manufacture soldering and soldering related equipment at Hakko. Hakko is a Japanese company. Uh, head office is located in Japan. Started out in 1954. And Hakko has affiliate offices all over the world. One of them being right here in the United States. That's us, American Hakko Products. Uh, American Hako started out here in the United States 35 years ago in 1984. Yes. Um, we first started making our name in the United States with our uh, good quality desoldering tools, um, believe it or not. And over the times, we built upon that reputation and we expanded our lineup not only for desoldering tools, but soldering, desoldering, uh, rework, hot air rework, fume extractors, um, accessories, you name it. Yep. So let's start off with uh, the first category. Sure, let's we'll start off soldering. with soldering. Yeah. For our soldering category, we have different, all sorts of different types of products available. Uh, some examples are like the stick irons, the FX650 stick iron that we have here. We also have battery operated stick irons. We also have the FX888D, which is very popular in the uh, DIY RC hobbyist markets. We also have the single port FX951 that I have here. There's also a dual port FN203. We also have a induction type uh, soldering station. That's this one right here. It's called the FX100. These stations are more used in the uh, industrial field. Uh, contract manufacturers, OEM manufacturers in various industries like military, aerospace, automotive, and medical industries as well. Yep. And also for our starting stations, we have different types of hand pieces available. I'm just going to throw out um, some couple of uh, hand pieces out there. This is an example of our standard hand piece that we have here. And we also have micro hand piece available in our soldering stations as well. Nice. But, oh, I forgot. There's also a ultra heavy duty soldering station that we also carry. It's 300 watts of power, ultra heavy duty station. So we have a soldering station available for just about any kind of application out there. Yeah. Now that we've covered soldering, we're yep. going to get into desoldering. Desoldering. Yep. Um, desoldering station. This FR410 is an example of our high power 140 watt desoldering station. It has uh, visual indicators that allow the user to know when to perform maintenance on the unit. Um, there's various nozzle shapes available in the desoldering tools. There's also a ultra heavy duty desoldering station called the FR3, FR400, mm -hmm. excuse me, and it has 300 watts of power for the uh, FR400 desoldering station. Is there a portable desoldering unit available? Yes. For those of you who do not want a um, station type desoldering tool, we also have a portable type of desoldering tool. It's called the FR301. That's this tool right here. Mm -hmm. Very handy. It plugs directly into the wall so you could take it out in the field and do your desoldering out in the field. And it comes with this nice um, lightweight carrying case that you can carry around also. It's easy to travel with. Easy to travel with. Um, so that's our desoldering category. Again, we have various uh, desoldering tools that you can use in the various industries like the medical, um, automotive, aerospace, military, and electronics and DIY markets as well. Yeah. So we covered soldering, desoldering. De uh, let's we're go to get the into rework. Rework. So we also have products in the rework category. Uh, uh, preheater is what you have, in, what Nicole has in her hand right there. It's called the FR870. It's a two bank preheater. We also have a larger footprint preheater. It's called the FR872. It's a four bank preheater. We also have uh, SMD hot air rework stations, which is the FR810B, like this one right here. Mm -hmm. FR810B, for the hot air tools, there's different types of nozzles size available. We also have an advanced version of the FR810B. It's called the FRA11. It's an advanced hot air rework station. Uh, so we have preheaters, hot air stations. Is there one that has a multi-port? 
Yes, the okay. multi-port rework station is this station down here. It's called Fine. the FM206. And as you can see, it has uh, three channels. And on those three channels, you can plug in various um, accessories, hand pieces. You can plug in a standard hand piece, a micro hand piece, uh, mini hot tweezers, parallel removers, and you can also uh, um, use a hot air pencil all in the FM206. You could also plug in a desoldering tool on the FM206, so it's more like a uh, all-in-one, three-in-one three in uh, rework station. Nice. FM206. 206. Yep. And um, with our soldering, desoldering, rework tools, we also have different types of accessories available. Uh, what do I mean by accessories? I'm talking about uh, stuff like tip thermometers. We have tip thermometers. We also have uh, different oh, iron holders. We have tip cleaners, and uh, we also have uh, what do you call it? Solder, solder wheel solder. holders as yep. well. Those are just some of the accessories that we also carry here at American Hot Gold Products. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, different types of accessories uh, we do carry, and with all this uh, soldering, desoldering, rework that's going on, there's a lot of uh, solder smoke that's being produced, and you want to try to keep those fumes away from the operators as much as possible. And at Hako, we carry a couple different options for uh, fume, extractor. fume extractors. We have, for example, the FA400 smoke absorber, and we also have the FA430 fume extractor. What's the difference between the two? So the uh, difference between the two, the smoke absorber is taking the smoke away from in front of you and pushing it away from you so you're not inha directly inhaling all those solder smoke. Uh, the fume extractor is more of a complete filtration system where it has um, a pre-filter and a main filter inside. So the fume extractor is uh, absorbing all that solder smoke away from you. It's passing through the filtration system and pushing out cleaner air. Nice. Now. I just want to make sure we're reminding our viewers that we're giving you a general overview. Yep. If you want more details, if you want specs on certain products, make sure you visit our website, yep. hakousa.com, or feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Sure. What's our next category, Kenza? Our next category will be the cable and wire harness category. Uh, these products in the cable and wire harness category, we've always carried these products uh, like the heat gun or the solder pot and the uh, thermal wire strippers. We always carry these uh, products, excuse me, um, but we gather it into um, one category called the cable and wire harness category. Uh, the FX301B is an example of a solder pot. Um, the HJ5000 is our heat gun, and mm -hmm. um, the FT802 will be our thermal wire strippers. Um, Why would someone be interested in a thermal wire stripper? What type of industry uses? The thermal wire strippers, people the use the thermal wire strippers um, when they cannot use uh, mechanical wire strippers because they're afraid that the mechanical wire strippers will um, nick the actual wires inside. Uh, those type of people use thermal wire strippers. Okay. They're used in like the military, the aerospace, and the medical um, industries okay. for the thermal wire strippers. Okay. And you, people can use the FX301 solder pot to uh, tin those wires after they've been uh, stripped. Nice. So that's our cable and wire harness category. Yep. And the next category is our robotic soldering category. This is a uh, rather robots. new category <laughs> new category <laughs> that we have here at American Aqua <laughs> Products. And we have a couple different options available for our uh, customers in the robotic soldering category, one of them being the FU500 and 601 um, feeder and uh, station. That's more of an integrated modular type of robotic soldering system where you can attach the head onto an already existing uh, robotic system that our customers are already using. Or we also have the option of going with a full turnkey robotic solder system. It's called the HU200. Okay. Uh, it's a four axis um, bench top, complete turnkey robotic soldering system. Why would someone be interested in the robotic system? Who, um, who would who would be who interested? Would, yeah. There's different reasons why someone may want to go from manual soldering to robotic soldering. Uh, some reasons might be they want to cut down on cost or they want to cut down on, say, the process time okay. or they really can't find a skilled op operator to perform the work. Uh, okay. Those type of reasons are some of the reasons why um, customers may want to start to look into robotic soldering systems. Okay. Next is uh, CHP, I believe. CHP, CHP brand of quality hand tools like yep. cutters. We have pliers, uh, lead formers, tweezers. And we also carry some ESD products, like I have some ESD mats, for example, that we carry. We have heel grounders. 
have a glove that I can't get on. ESD gloves. <laughs> <laughs> we have wrist straps. We have various sides of ESD bags and polymide tapes as well. And also under the CHP brand, we have, a, um, we have our electric torque driver line, CHP electric torque driver line, that, that are those torque drivers that you see there. Our torque drivers are very good quality torque drivers. They're ESD safe housing, very good quality. And what's unique about our torque driver line is that the power supplies, they can actually mount onto the spring balancers like how Nicole is showing there. So what happens when you can mount the power supply to the spring balancer is that it eliminates all that clutter on top of your workbench. So it's a very nice option to have. Yes. And in the torque driver line, we also carry torque testers, screw presenters, magnetizers, and also right angle adapters. Thank you, Kenta. Thank you. We covered a lot. Just want to reiterate that this is a general overview. Mm -hmm. For more information, make sure you're logging on to our website hakousa.com. Until next time, make sure. Remember, keep, keep your, your eye on Hako. Thanks for watching. Thank you.